Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Today, we're going to begin our waxing of the morphological contours and anatomy of the teeth. You have a set of uh, eight or nine teeth that will have uh, certain types of preparations on them, and you'll be expected to wax them back to their normal uh, morphological contours. Now, just to help uh, you in, in the uh, waxing of this, first we thought we'd review and by means of using a skull that has an intact uh, dental arch, uh, some of the points you should keep in mind. The first tooth that you're going to wax is number eight, a central incisor. Now, since the tooth that we'd like you to do is, has a defect on the skull, we'll call your attention to some of the points on the tooth number nine. You notice on the distal that we have a rounded incisal angle, whereas on the meso, we have a more acute incisal angle. Now, because of the rounding of the incisal angle and the flaring out of the distal, why your contact point with the adjacent tooth then will be more cervical on the distal than it will on the mesial. And these are the points you should think about as you wax. Now I'm going to open the skull and we'll just look at the uh, lingual uh, part of the tooth. And we will want to replace then the marginal ridges, which will be missing. And you notice that the marginal ridges are definite, but they're not prominent. And also in this area, we will replace the cingulum. Now these are the main points that we want you to think about as you wax. Also on the tooth that you will be waxing, you will notice that the incisal edge is missing, so the tooth will be shorter than the adjacent tooth. You should wax the incisal edge back, remembering the angles of the mesial and distal, so it's the same length then as your adjacent tooth. Now we'll take the, your visodont, typodont, and we have in that, at the present time, a tooth that has not been prepared. So you should get this picture clearly in mind. At the same time, you should cite both from the mesial and distal and notice the labial contour. You should look head on and notice the contour of the angle on the distal and on the mesial. Notice the space that's left for the soft tissue uh, to come in between the teeth in the interproximal area. And then if we open the uh, visodont, why well, you notice that there are uh, marginal ridges in this cingulum. So you should have this picture firmly in mind. And then as you will remember, we showed you how to remove the teeth from the visodont, which we'll do now, and we'll place in the prepared tooth. Now you'll notice as I we move the tooth here while we're moving other teeth at the same time. And we want to be sure that we have those teeth completely seated back in. Otherwise, when you get done and somebody checks it, well, you'll find that the wax tooth will be incorrect. Now we'll place it in and then seat it in very firmly. Make sure it's seated. Remember we told you to check in the collar area to make sure it's snapped in so it's locked in place. And then make sure now that the teeth are all seated. Now, for your initial waxing, we we'll hold the typodon in this position and we'll flow just a light layer of wax over the lingual portion. This will make it easier then to add wax uh, onto wax rather than adding it onto the cold tooth model. Uh, once we have done this and we have it approximately the way we want it, we will then remove the tooth again, make any corrections that need to be made in the interproximal area, uh, polish it with a little cotton in cold water, and then replace it back into the visodont. Uh, look at it, make any other changes we think that you that you think you should make, and then it'll be ready to be checked by an instructor. So uh, we will now take our number seven spatula, the beaver tail spatula. And remember, you should have practiced with the wax a little now, so you know a little bit better how to handle it. Uh, heat the spatula and, and then test it against the wax till you feel you have it at the right temperature. It should melt the wax and pick it up and then come over and flow a little on the lingual of the tooth. Now this merely is to 
make it easier for you to add wax at a later time with some of the other instruments. And after a few minutes, why you're fine that you can take and, and add it rather rapidly. But right now, we're really just flowing a little thin layer of wax so that it will be easier for you to add wax. And remember now that we want to keep our instruments clean so if we begin to build up wax, why wipe it off and that so we don't get a big glob of wax. Now, when you do this, you want to close the type of don occasionally and make sure you're not building it too thick. And uh, as we build the marginal ridges, we continuously keep uh, checking to make sure that uh, we are placing them in the proper place and getting the right relationship with the lower uh, teeth. Now we're using the P.K. Thomas waxing instrument number one, which is the one that works the best for this procedure. However, you can use your Ward's carver if you want to. And heat it until we get a drop of wax that will stay on, and then we'll come over and we'll begin to flow the marginal ridges. Now, if you get a large drop of wax that doesn't flow by heating the instrument, you can begin to draw just as if you had a pencil and begin to draw the wax so it will go into places that you want it to. And uh, if the wax doesn't flow or it balls up, well, you can just take your instrument and heat it and uh, draw it around, melt it right against the tooth. Now, don't overheat the wax. Now, we try to add wax rather than put on a great deal of wax and have to carve a lot off. Now, that is another technique of waxing, but it's one that uh, doesn't uh, lend itself as well to the functional procedure that you will be following at a later time. You find that with the Bunsen burner, you have a little better control of your flame than you do with the alcohol lamps that I'm using because uh, it gives you a little uh, more pressure behind the flame and it doesn't blow around as much. Remember to put your waxing instrument into the inner cone where you get the most heat and you don't have to hold it in as long. Now you notice we're getting probably a little more wax than we want in the foss area, but we do want to build up the cingulum. So by using the edge of the instrument, uh, we can draw that wax back down into the cingulum area and develop our cingulum. take and spread out the wax now a little bit that was in the foss area so we begin to get some semblance now of the anatomy that we want on the lingual portion of the tooth. Now if you should get a great deal of wax extra more than you really want if you heat the instrument just slightly you can pick up the excess and wipe it on a piece of cotton and then go back. So you can remove wax, and there's no reason not to remove the wax as you work. Uh, don't work with too much wax in your way. Now, we do want to add to the incisal. I'll add a little bit with the mannequin open, and then we're going to check it and see how we're coming from the labial view. Notice that we have a little bit of wax that has attached itself to the adjacent tooth. And uh, we, before we remove this tooth to complete the interproximal area, uh, we can take our ward carver and just uh, cut that and remove it from the adjacent tooth. So just warm it slightly. And we can come in now and notice how you can just cut that away from the adjacent tooth. Now we have our angle somewhat defined, but it's certainly not uh, exactly the way we want it. And we can see that we need more wax towards the distal in this area. So we'll add just a little more wax there before we take the tooth out of the uh, viscera. Uh, better to have just a slight excess of wax in this area and then you can you can form the angle and uh, smooth it out 
with the excess that you have uh, when you take it out in your hand. If it's too short, well, of course, you have to keep adding more wire. Okay. Now we have somewhat the right amount of wax, but if we look at this from a, a view, you can see we have wax that's out beyond the labial contour. And when we finish, if we, not at this time, but a little later, we can take our warm instrument and let it ride against the labial contour and form the contour that we want. Now we're going to remove this from the visidon and build up the mesial contact here. Now, as you do this, uh, try not to put too much pressure on the wax, so you will just uh, you may distort it. Now, as we take it out, well, you can see that in this area that was in close proximity to the adjacent tooth that we were unable to flow the wax the way we wanted it. So now we'll do this in our hand. Now as we do this, notice again we support our fingers so our hand has, has uh, got some control and uh, we're not just freehand uh, waving out in the breeze out here and uh, adding wax at random. this up and try to keep in mind now how much contour you needed from the original time that you you uh, looked at the uh, tooth. Remember the angle on the mesial is more acute so we will try and keep that a sharper angle. Now we're getting a little wax up on our instrument. Notice how it will flow down and sometimes we get more wax than we want. So we have to remember to hold it in the, in the right position in the plane. And that was just a teeny bit too warm, and so it didn't go where we wanted it. Now, when we do that, why we can, by warming the instrument a little, we can come back and move the wax up in the area that we want it. Now, we don't have our marginal ridge on the mesial yet, so now we will go ahead and, and try to complete that area. Now, the wax sometimes looks a little bumpy here, so by Using the instrument just with a little warmth to it, we can we can iron the wax and we get a little better appearance to it. Now again, we aren't quite completed in the interproximal. We want to add a little more wax in this area. Now by using the back of the instrument, warm and letting it ride on the tooth, why we begin to develop that contour that we want. There's a little bubble that needs to be filled in. Now from the labial, if we wipe the wax off from our instrument on the cotton and just warm our instrument slightly and just test it so it isn't too warm, then we can form this labial contour that follows the contour of the tooth from up the inner proximal. And now we want to just barely touch up the incisal. Again, if you don't support your hand when you do this, you'll probably take the whole incisal off. See, now that we notice the lingual is a little rough. And that's because we haven't gone back now, and just by warming the instrument slightly, we can, we can begin to iron the wax smoother. And you can either do it with the end of the instrument or sometimes the side, depending on the access you have. And you want to get rid of any of this wax that doesn't belong where it is, and we can either touch it with the instrument or we can, can uh, take a carver and remove it. Now, I want to show you a carver, even though you may not always uh, need it. I want to show you how it can be used in this uh, area. Now remember, as we stated before, be sure and wipe the excess wax from your instrument because if you don't, it builds up and then the next time you pick it up, you may spoil your whole wax uh, from, from uh, adding uh, too much wax in the spot. Now you notice this carver has two ends. This is called a discoid cleoid carver and we do not flame it. But by using whichever end seems to work the best, we can just by very, very little carving, we can define now our lingual fossa. You can notice that we don't use this instrument hot uh, ever. We don't put this instrument in the plane 
to make our margin straight. We do have to remember to wipe off the wax, otherwise it'll begin to attach itself. We can come around on the marginal areas and carve them so that we get them back to a normal tooth contour. Notice we just carve the wax, but we don't cut big pieces of the wax off. Now with the scooped in, if you want to, why you can come up and and uh, do this type of thing, which uh, will smooth out the froth area. And the other area you want to pick up a little of the excess wax, pack across the labial. And you can iron the incisal a little bit with the back of this instrument to give us a flat incisal edge. Now this is a this wax is uh, nearly completed, and what we would do now is take a little water on a piece of cotton and just lightly rub the wax and polish the wax. Now it's best to use the cotton in a pair of tweezers, but ab not absolutely necessary. And with just light pressure, why we would polish the wax. This picks up any little loose pieces of wax and smooths the surface. You notice that it now gives a better appearance to our wax and smooths it. Now, at this point, we would take another piece of cotton and we would get it wet in cold water. And we're doing this to help you keep from distorting your wax while you place the tooth back in the visidon. So with the cold, wet cotton, we would then take and place our tooth back in the visidon. Try not to push on the wax any more than necessary. And uh, then when you get it in, make sure that the tooth is fully seated. Now you can do this by lining it up with the adjacent teeth. We also would want to check and make sure we didn't build it too thick from the lingual. It should be similar to the tooth next to it. And uh, just in general, check the contour and so on. Now at this point, we would pick up our cowhorn explorer. And the cowhorn explorer, as we told you, is an examination instrument. So we would want to use a cowhorn explorer and come in and see if our wax followed the contour of the tooth. And as you can see, we have a contour that the wax from the tooth and the tooth to the wax is very smooth. And so uh, now we have a wax that is uh, ready to be uh, checked by uh, one of the instructors. And we would like to check the wax in place in your visidon. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.